<laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa. Hold on. There we go. Oh, my my dog's bed is all messed up. I gotta fix it. <laughs> oh, no. They saw that as a cue to come over and talk to me. There we go. <laughs> so... Today we're doing something a little bit different because in the many other episodes we've done we have reviewed and given feedback on indie games that people have made whereas in this video we're gonna do something else. Never Song is a game that was made by another YouTuber called Thomas Brush which I really recommend checking out because he has a lot of really awesome videos when it comes to trying to get a game released and how to do art for your games like he's really good at showing that type of thing in his videos, uh, especially for people who doubt themselves when it comes to being able to draw. I really recommend checking out his channel. It's good if you're an indie game developer and you're, especially if you're quite new at it, especially his 80s intros on some of the videos are the best ones, I think. It, it's just so funny. So before we get into Never Song, I just want to clarify what exactly we're doing. Because like I said, we're not giving feedback on the game. We may find some bugs or not. Um, I have a tendency to when I play these indie games to try and break games and break sequences and that type of thing. So uh, we may find some bugs, who knows? Um, <laughs> but the reason we're playing this game is because I want to show you all what it looks like when you play a game that is polished. We played a lot of games where the developers didn't seem like they were spending that much time trying to polish their game. So I wanted to show you all what it looks like when you play a game that is actually polished and what the player controller feels like, what the environment looks like, how the overall tone of the game is, the the pacing of how everything is. I wanted to just sort of play a game that was polished and talk a bit about it as we go through it. What I notice, what I might think is missing, you know, just overall things that I pay attention to when I play a game that is that is a really good game. I do also want to mention that this is not going to be a full playthrough because I don't want to do a full playthrough since especially when it comes to like smaller indie game developers when they have full release games like this that is actually on the steam page or something else and they're trying to make a living i would much rather just play a short part of it and then if you're interested i will have a link in the description so you can go down and check it out if you want to to continue playing and, and see the rest of the game uh, but i can definitely recommend checking out never song if you're into 2d platformers and indie games with puzzle elements and that type of thing Never Song is a really good thing to pick up. So I, I really recommend um, getting into it. So with that said, oh, everything became dark. I've been talking too long. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and check out Never Song. Now, the first thing I'm just going to do before we actually dive into it is just talk a bit about the menu because the menu is awesome. One of the things that I immediately notice here is that I, I keep talking about making things snappy in all my previous videos that I've made. If you watch Thomas Brush videos, one of the things that he pay a lot of attention to is to make things snappy. So, for example, with the menu, instead of just like highlighting the next thing and it just kind of like feeling like this bland, you know, transition from menu item to menu item, in this case here, it actually feels incredibly snappy. So it snaps and clicks. Like, it's like you feel like, even though you don't feel any tactile feedback in your control, it's like your brain feels a tactile feedback when you when you click back and forward and it's just pretty awesome so um i don't actually know what's inside the options it is on a switch so there's probably just gonna be game volume and, and music volume um but just overall like when you listen to when you click things there's like different audios depending on if you're going back or if you're going into something i don't know it's just like tiny details like that that makes a game polished uh, because you really pay attention and you want your game to to feel really good when you play it and I can sit here and talk a lot about the menu I have finished the game by the way this is a save slot where when you finish the game there's a new game plus and you can actually play or get access to parts of the game that you couldn't in the first run so there is new game plus material in this game here uh, where you can go in you can actually hear about the development of this game and Fun fact, this game was actually made because Thomas Brush made a game back when Flask games were a thing, if I remember this correctly, and he made a game called Coma. So now in his later years, I think this came out in 2020, he made this game here as a better version of the original Coma for Flash, you know, like browser games and that type of thing. I don't actually know if I played it back then. I think I might have played it because Coma says something in my brain from like, you know, back in like many years ago. 
but he decided to make a full release for PC and for Switch. I don't know if it's for consoles as well, but he, he released it and we now have Never Song, which you may have gotten a little bit confused about because in his videos on his channel, he actually calls this Once Upon a Coma. And then when he released the game, he renamed it as Never Song. So if you watch his videos and he keeps saying, oh, you know, check out uh, Once Upon a Coma, he's actually talking about Never Song here. So let's go ahead and pick a new game because you don't want to see New Game Plus. You want to see New Game. That's an intro here. I'll just let it play. Loading screen, by the way, that's always really nice instead of you just sitting here waiting at a black screen for nothing and then you're like did it freeze Once upon a time, there was a boy, an orphan without a single toy. His name was Pete. His world was grey. Until he found a friend one day. It was no normal friend he'd found. She was but the prettiest girl in town. From that day on, the summer bore adventures every single morn. Her name was Wren, so young and gay. She even had a small piano she'd play. From sharps and flats to middle C, she taught Pete to play and read. But on one fateful evening they, when looking for some place to play, Pete and Wren stumbled through a door onto an abandoned asylum floor. And from the shadows, a face of white snatched poor Wren out of sight. Pete was not like Wren at all. He was timid, scared, and small. And this was his last farewell, for Pete into a coma fell. Okay, just had to send a text message. <laughs> so this is the beginning of the game and I finally have the chance to do something I wanted to do ever since I played through this game my second time, <laughs> which is that there is actually a tiny puzzle here at the beginning and I'll show you what I mean. Um, first of all, look at the art style because every single time I see his art style, I'm always just like completely blown away. It's one of those things where, you, you know when you when you hear a song that, you know, one of those really popular songs where the, one of the reasons it's so popular is because, first of all, it sounds really good, but second of all, you can also sing along with it because it's, it's, a, it's a song that everyone can sing. You know, it, it's one of those really good, uh, like you sing it at taverns or something. Um, like this game here with the art style, when you really try and look at it, feels like it's something that if you were to you know really try and, and seriously get into making a game and trying to make it into a vector style like this game is made here that you could possibly make something similar to this this is a game that i play or at least recommend people to play to give them hope about you can do it too and i'm not saying that in a demeaning way where like oh everyone can make this often when i see people try and make games and they go for a very simple blocky there we go a very simply blocky style because they don't know how to make art. They're not an artist. Um, it's really about just building it one brick at a time. A house has a lot of layering to it. Like it's it's the foundation. Then you have like the inner structure, and at the end you have like the outer brick walls. Like there's different elements to to building a house. And a lot of people, when they look at a game like this and they say, oh, I can't make a game like this because this is like, you know, the art is, is too difficult. I, I'm, I can't draw this type of thing. Uh, it's really about just taking it one step at a time. Can you build the wall in the back there? Sure. Just find a texture on Google and splash it on top of a, uh, 
you know, a, a square inside Photoshop? And can you build the windows? They're not like super complicated. They're pretty simple windows. Sure, you can do that. And then you have one wall. You put it inside your game. And you might look at it and think, well, there's not a lot here. Like, there's so much more before you get this. And it's overwhelming. But it's really about just building it one brick at a time. And then eventually, you're going to have a level like this. And it just looks amazing. The lighting, the ambience, the, the color choices of the game here are amazing. And that is something that you will probably have to look up, like some, some theory on. But when it comes to building the actual environment, not considering the colors... It is possible to do it. You just got to do it one step at a time and then eventually you'll get to it. So usually when people tell me, oh, I, I'm not an artist because I'm not an artist either. Just build it one step at a time and eventually you'll get to something. Um, I just clicked on a door <laughs> a while ago. And the reason I did that is because there's a puzzle here. <clears throat> there's a bunch of doors and you have to spell out a name and check voicemail. It's Ren. Um, so S M, because we have to spell out smile. Because oh, a game by Thomas Bruss and Serenity Forge. I looked this up actually, and I found out that Serenity Forge is the publishing agency that he used. S M I L E. Okay, so it's the same thing. So when I go over and go down here, because it's going to loop one more time. And I can do it again. Is it going to change, or is it going to be the same event happening? So it says smile here. Duck the smile. I'm not going to do any spoilers, by the way, because I really want you guys to check this out yourself if you really enjoy it. So I'm just going to play and not spoil anything. <coughs> Never song. I really love this uh, title splash screen here. Well, it's not really a splash screen. It's uh, it's really it, it like aesthetically just looks really good. Also, with the little loading guy at the in the bottom right corner, I think that's the save guy. Like it, it auto saves when that happens because there's also a loading bar there. I don't know. Is it the loading thing duplicated twice? It may be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it would take this long to save. Maybe the the little fairy next to him that disappeared is the loading thing and then when he's running is uh, no that's the saving thing and then him running is the loading thing maybe that's the thing 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 oh <laughs> now i almost want to just like reset the game and go back again i was supposed to loop a second time and i just realized that it stops looping when you solve the puzzle with the doors I thought the puzzle doors were a optional thing all the time I've been playing. I thought there was two loops, you went through once, and then the environment actually changes. You get some creepy guys standing outside the windows, and you get like some uh, some weird red bubbles around the place that you can... I don't know if you can interact with them. Um, I almost want to check something else here now. It's not really going to break any sequence, I just really want to check something if I remember it. Um, Oh, what is it? Uh, oh, it's been so long since I played this. Okay, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is that there's this piano at the very beginning of the game. And throughout the game, when you beat bosses and that type of thing, they give you notes that you can play. And I don't know if I'm supposed to beat the bosses first and then get the combinations. Or if I can just type them in the very beginning here. Because when you do that, it unlocks different doors around you that gives you specific skills, like a baseball bat or a umbrella that you can use or something. Um, oh, what is the combination? I could, I remembered it. <laughs> First try. <laughs> okay. Um, you can cheese the game. I just realized I'm not supposed to have this yet. Yeah, okay. I was just like, should I leave that out? Because I don't... This is the very first item you get. Like, you just need to walk out and then you go to a place, you get the combination, and then you go back here again. So this is not really spoiling any ending thing. So this is the very first object you will actually pick up. So it's not... I shouldn't cut this out. I was just considering, should I cut this out of the, the playthrough? Because 
I didn't want to give you guys the combination for like an end game item immediately. Um, luckily, the combination I remembered here was for the first item. <laughs> okay. Um, Booty Bump Pals, 1952. Awesome. Um, this is a safe place, by the way. A fireplace safe place. Um, once you... Um, oh, by the way, this here. I actually have one critique for this, because I actually noticed this the first time I played through the game. And I just want to point out, when I play games like this, indie games, I have a tendency to spend way too long in one location instead of progressing the game. Just so you prepare, okay? <laughs> um, when I smash some of these pots by doing this, there's like way too many pot pieces flying around than there would actually be in the actual pot. Sometimes it happens, other times it doesn't. I just think it's, it's kind of weird. Your dusty mattress. When Ren's parents are so nice, sleeping here beats that all orphanets caught any day. Oh, so he's an orphan. And then he uh, was allowed to sleep at her place, is what I'm seeing. That's nice. And this is the outdoors. I just love the environment. I love that you can see the hills in the back. I love that you can, you know, see the little house. There's just like so many awesome, like the, the color grading of, uh, the color grading, the, also the color grading, but the, just like the color choices are just amazing. The music is really good. The sound effects are amazing. Like you really need to pay attention to all these things. Cause when I play a game like this, I 30% enjoy the story. And 70% of my brain is analyzing things like, oh, how does it sound like when I'm hitting stuff? Can I break things? You know, what is the, how did he animate the things? What about the physics? How do they function? <laughs> so like, I'll be testing out things. How did he uh, make the player controller? Can I change direction mid-air? You know, I'll, I'll stand around for 30 minutes analyzing the player. Um, and you can also see that particle effects coming from the ground. So when he's walking on bricks, and when he's walking on grass, we have different particles. I'm guessing he linked together the um, the particles to to the the ground that he was walking on. Uh, whereas I'm making a game as well right now, and I'm just I have the same particle. Okay, pay attention to the pot pieces here. I think they're a little bit too too big and too many. But again, it's not a realist realism game, so it's not something that's really a criticism. Um, Something's written on the door in crayon. Let's read it. The hotel is now the property of the exclusive Booty Bum Gang. It's now called Booty Bum Clubhouse and you can suck a big one. Punky. Oh, that's the, the guy who wrote it. Um, that was realistic, I think. Um, I was saying something. <laughs> I just really like the environment looks so amazing. Like everything is so well I just hit the table. Everything is so well balanced with everything. You don't feel like the environment repeats itself. You feel like even though you have the same assets repeating over and over when you switch to the next place here, like you feel like everything is just like, everything is different and it should be. Um, so as we go in here, this is the barber. A message is scribbled in the mirror. CG, CGB. Okay, that was the message I just, uh, how did this get here? Yeah, so Ren wrote this for me. This is the combination I just typed in to get the bat, by the way. So, that's what I skipped, okay? <laughs> I didn't skip any endgame stuff. Pete, you're finally awake. Notice the music change when you, uh, when you talk to them, depending on which character you're talking to. And just like that there's like bounciness, it's not just like a static fixed image, it's actually like moving which is awesome to adventure out to the spiderian sewer to look for the grown-ups and the oh, snap sounds me is filled with little butterflies anyways i think like <laughs> might be down there. i don't know do i appreciate the little things too much i bet like there's a bunch of people sitting here thinking oh my gosh daniel <laughs> just uh just play the game stop analyzing so much like you're stopping constantly you want to see the game like i said that's not the type of video here Wait a second. <laughs> There's no grass here. Why is there grass coming up? Again, this 
is most likely tied to the fact that there's grass up here. And like I said, the particle emitter underneath uh, the player's foot is emitting the particle type depending on the platform he's standing on. So because this platform here technically is grassy, even if there is a tiny area down here that has no grass, it's still the same platform. So technically, in the code, um, he's emitting this type of particle because he is on this type of platform. Whereas if you go down here, yeah, it's a different type of particle. It's uh, like he's running on rocks. And even though there's grass over here, it's still rocks because this is breakable. So now there's no grass, so it should still be rocks, right? Um, it's just that kind of thing that I noticed when I when I played these type of games. <laughs> My dog is snoring. It's locked from the inside. Uh, basically, we woke up here. Um, it is one of those games that is meant to be confusing, and then you slowly start realizing what is going on. Hey. Oh, it's Chad. Hey, Chad. You honestly didn't think you'd make it out of your coma, bro. Oh, radical, dude. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Too bad about Ren, though. Yeah, so we came out of a coma, and Ren has been kidnapped. Apparently she was like kidnapped right in front of your face, bro. The kids are sick. Don't worry, nobody's judging. You were just too chicken to take care of her. The slug wasn't worth it to you. I get it. Ren's nickname? <laughs> we all call her the slug. Yeah, okay. Um. Oh yeah. The, uh, by the way, I have a theory about these people because um, they all have like different. Um, of psychological things. I don't know what Chad's issue is, but like you have people who have like ADHD, and then you have this guy who is, um, oh, what do you call that? You know, when you're obsessed with like if you spin around once this way, you have to spin around once the other way, like, uh, like th that kind of thing. So he's trying to get to 1 billion, and he's obsessed with getting to 1 billion. Okay. I wonder if there's like a meaning behind that number. So, can I help? Considering you're the reason ever- I mean, you fainted in terror as Ren was kidnapped. So the grown-ups went to Black Fork Asylum fast, to I try know. and find her. They so, haven't been back since. It's all right, yeah, we have buddy. to find Ren. Just be careful asking stupid questions. After I finish counting, of course. Uh, if you do ask him further into why he's doing what he's doing, then he's saying, oh, just like why I want my hair to be a certain length. And then he mentions a number. Um, yeah, so he's uh, he has like an obsession uh, with numbers. <laughs> I didn't even break them with my bat. <laughs> uh, by the way, I've been trying to um, figure out a good way to do water in my game. Because like I mentioned earlier, I was making a, a game myself. Uh, everything got deleted on my hard disk a month ago because my... Hard disk are just apparently not as reliable as SSDs, and you should apparently also back up your things. I do not, apparently, so I lost all my little game projects when my hard disk broke down last month. Um, this door, by the way, because it has a blue lock on it, means that you can go to it after you finish the game because you get a blue key in New Game Plus, so you can go in here and check things out. So we can't go in yet. You have to finish the game to do that. Yeah, so I've been working on a game too, and... <laughs> I think this will actually be my first game that I actually try to finish because I have like I think I have about 15 to 20 different types of games just like spread out in different computers where I think I lost like 18 of them on my hard disk last month so <laughs> I don't have a lot of them left. Pete, it's me, Bird. You woke up. Oh, hey, what's I'm up? Locked in this cage. That's what's up. I just saw Ren. Yeah. A man carried her down into the Siberian <gasps> sewer. No. Without her medication, I don't see her lasting much longer. Okay. Oh, she needs medication. Like to get me out of this cage. Okay. Um. So we can save over here. Save the game. Let's continue. I just love the environment. Look at the windmills in the background. They look great. A heart thistle. If you collect a hundred of these, you'll get another heart. I've actually thought to myself, because when you get a hundred, you do just automatically get a heart. And it is possible to farm these. I wonder what happens if you get... Like, all the way to the right side of the screen, just hearts. Like, does it, like, just go outside the screen? Or does it say, oh, you reached the maximum number of hearts, you can't go any further. Maybe it'll give you, like, a, 
a weird um, <laughs> Easter egg message like, oh my god, you have no life or something because um, you collected too many lives. Okay, so this is our first combat scenario. Notice how snappy it is. Notice how the screen shakes. Notice how the enemies respond when you hit them. Um, snappiness, like I said, there's three pillars to making a good game, at least when it comes to 2D. You need to make the game look good. You need to make sure that the player controls feels right, which in this case they do. Like, I feel like I have a lot of control over my character here. Um, and also, he just feels great visually to look at when, when you move around. That's part of a, a play controller as well. The third thing is that you need to make things snappy. You need to make things feel like they have some sort of tactile feedback to your brain. Not actual tactile feedback. Well, maybe maybe make your controller shake or something. But um, you need to like really feel like your, your brain should feel satisfied that you're hitting something. Like that. Like, notice... Like, uh, you just really want to hit it, because it feels good to hit it. Oh yeah, there's unlockables in this game. Uh, Red Queen, there's a ton of them hiding all over the place. Okay, so we'll get this, and we'll get his headband. I never really understood, like, there's like different types up here. Like, there's environmental stuff, and there's stars. I actually haven't unlocked any of these. Um, I'm, I can't wait to like play the new game plus finished and then actually collect those other unlockables. Hey, puke face, get over here and help me. I'm stuck. Simeon, we're not good pals, okay? Isn't it obvious, puke? <laughs> puke face and puke. I have hypoinflammatory disorder. I inflate randomly. Oh, my wife is playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> Give me my sewing needle, puke fart. My mom gave it puke to me fart. Forward. Ah, uh, Simeon. If you want me to help you, stop calling me puke, fart, and, and fart face, and whatever vocabulary you have. Uh. <laughs> it feels good, okay? Oh, I love this. Notice how his, uh, his jumping animation plays out too. Like, his animations in general, they feel really good. The fact that there's when when you land on the ground he like he like bounces and collapses on his body like it feels good. Oh, I didn't know if you like hit something mid air at least one of these like you would jump back. That's funny. Um, oh, notice the jumping there. Oh, it stopped doing it. Um, sometimes in this game there's like. Um, let me just get past this. I'll show you in a second, because there's another place over here. Notice the... Uh, what do you call that? Like, the vignette effect? Like, there was, like, a, a texture on top of the screen with, like, like six sacks around the border. Uh, when you get hit, again, tactile feedback. From when you get hit, you really feel like, ouch, that, that hurt, you know? Instead of just, like... Like, the player could just, like, go, like, turn red for, like, a... a a brief millisecond and then oh no you took damage but notice how like taking damage affects everything on the screen um just feels good notice the jumping in thing oh up there in the top left corner okay so now it stops but this one this one continues jumping i think it's because it unloads objects when you get to next screen to to save memory it is a switch game so you know maybe on computer it's just going to keep everything loaded in but on the switch you know, there has to be some optimization stuff going on. Um, yeah, it's supposed to say something here. <laughs> I think it says something like, this is Ren's favorite spot, I think. Uh, I think I broke sequence somehow. It... Maybe, did I talk to everyone? I, did I talk to the guy in the swing? Maybe that's what I need to do. Yeah, this is the ADHD guy. Um, Punky. That's me. Simeon said I should go and find him some help. But I'm too busy dancing. Do you like my dance moves? <laughs> my sure do. I'm so proud of myself for turning another age. Okay, proud of yourself for... For turning... Oh, I knew that. I knew that I, did, I was not surprised when I hit that and the thing came out. <laughs> um, it's good that you're proud of turning another age. I don't know if that's a reference to something, but 
It's good for him. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Okay. Um, yeah, so we broke sequence, I think. And we need to find out what it is. Uh, oh! Oh, I don't think I need to talk to the guy in the swing. I think I forgot to take the ferry with me. Maybe the ferry says, this is Ren's favorite spot. Or maybe it asks something else. Because I could also talk to this guy here. Parkour. Parkour. A pair of A pee -pee. It's so it cool. The mighty park <laughs> yeah, I just saw some guy take her down into the Spadirian sewer. He was just um, Okay, yeah, so it says we have to go down to the Spadirian sewer to get Rin back. Um so let me go back and and get this fairy. <laughs> that I, I, I don't know why I didn't pick up the fairy immediately. Um when you sit here and you analyze and you have to like entertain and talk at the same time, it's just uh sometimes you forget things. Did the tree just load in? Oh my god, they do! The bushes and the trees that are animating and moving, I think they're loading in. Like, you can barely see it, but I think they are. Oh... I think I actually found a legit bug here. I should be playtester. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, this is not really one that you find. This is one that you just like notice. Uh, the tail on the ferry is not supposed to go behind the tree. So the the particle actually no, this is a trail effect that's behind the uh, the ferry um, is layered differently than the tree, but it's not going behind any other environment. So I guess it's the tree that's layered incorrectly. Oh oh. I noticed something else. Um, something you'll also see with Thomas Brush is that he has a lot of foreground elements. In this case, here in the open world, you'll see that we have like blurred out bushes in the foreground, uh, which really helps to add some layering to, to the world that he's building. It's one of the, the few tips that I really appreciated uh, learning from watching his videos on YouTube. Yeah, so let's go over here, let's get Simeon his needle even though I don't want to give it to him. It's only because you want to get to Ren, okay? Yeah, he uh, he doesn't deserve <laughs> getting punctured or whatever. <laughs> he just sit there all day. Um Pete, check it out in the tree. Is that Simeon's sewing needle? Now we should be able to interact. Ren's yeah. I like the bird knows that this is Ren's favorite spot. Um Yeah, so that's why we couldn't interact with it. Had, had I made the game, I would probably... I don't know, maybe he added in the, uh, the, the... Like, the bird had to say that, because we want to... Get a little bit closer to bird, and actually feel like it's an actual talking entity that's following us, that we can, like, talk to. Because I was thinking, maybe you, you should just let the, the player say, Oh, this is Ren's favorite spot. My sewing needle. Oh... Actually, no, I know why. It's because the player at... The, like, there's no moment in the game where the player is actually talking. This is like a link situation. Other people talk to the player, and we just need to choose uh, a response. So, the player couldn't say anything, because it, it it's not set up that way. So, the bird has to be the one saying it. Did he just poop? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> oh. It sounded like it. It may not be that way, but it sounded like it. Help! Help! These spiders are gonna eat me alive! Ah, uh, well, I didn't come down for you, so. <laughs> Alright, let's kill everything. There we go. Oh! Ow! Oh, there was something here! I didn't even see it! I like the fact, by the way, that any time you kill one of these tiny um, enemies, that you gain a heart. So if you, like, took damage, you can just, like, go down and, and kill one of them. Really notice the layering here. It looks amazing. Like, with all the, uh, the... What do you call it? The things hanging from the ceiling, like the black things. Grass? Moss? I don't know what it is. Um... There's something hanging from the ceiling. 
Notice all the different lighting that you have. Like in Unity, 2D lighting is just amazing uh, for 2D games. 2D lighting is amazing for 2D games. I'm, I'm double saying 2D. <laughs> it has good 2D lighting, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm noticing that there's like pictures up here on the wall from time to time in the game. And I don't know if these are supposed to be like the real life... Uh, like this is how the characters in the game would look like if they were real people or if this is like uh, Green light backers or oh I didn't even notice it. I was too busy focused on the on the painting <laughs> I don't know who the people are Maybe people who are like, you know helped out or something um, this water effect here is interesting because I have actually tried to like look up how do you make water like this in 2D in Unity. And there's a lot of things with like shaders and you have to put up like, you know, th there's different ways to do water. You can also just do with a bunch of like little uh, rigid body objects, but it's like super performance heavy. There's many ways to do water. And I do believe that this is one of the purchasable water acids that you can get on the, the asset store for like... 13 dollar a euro 13 euro um at least this was my favorite one as well that i saw i've seen this water effect in other games too yeah i'm, I'm absolutely sure i've seen this water effects in multiple 2d indie games um probably because it's such a good one to to get um I, you know water in 2d is one of those things where i would personally just just buy myself to to an asset pack that has water like this that you can customize because it's it's a lot of work, <laughs> and you have to know a lot about shaders in order to set something like that up. Um, a lot of programming goes into it. It's it's just it's it's it, in my opinion, I would just buy myself to it. Um, Welcome to my state-of-the-art research facility. This, my friend, is where all crack. Uh, now I want to figure out what the exact thing is called. I have it saved, by the way. I have it saved here. Um, it is called. Ah, here it is. Water 2D tool. 13.40 euro. So, 13 and a half euro. And then you have, like, a, a water thing. I can actually show it. It's right here. This is the water pack if you want to get this particular water effect. Um, I know that the preview up here is in 3D, but it is meant for 2D. And I think they call it a 2 and a half D or something when it's, like, 3D like this, but it still looks like, you know kind of 2d-ish but yeah this is the this is the water effect you can get um i don't know why the preview up here is in a 3d game when it's it's a t water 2d tool uh but this is a very popular one a lot of people use it um this is definitely from my understanding what has been used in this game here at least you know i would be surprised if he made it himself from scratch because it is not easy to do that not doubting your abilities, Thomas. I'm just saying. <laughs> Impressive if you did. There's so. No question science can't answer. Oh, you're right, Preston. Oh, I have to admit, all I have are questions. Uh, yeah. Let's examine the fact. There's a giant centipede <gasps> downstairs, and she only seems to respond to smell. Fact. There's some weird man sneaking around Redwind and beyond. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, that's the guy who kidnapped Ren, I'm pretty sure. My mind can only fathom the I I'm skipping past a little bit fast, by the way. Um, again, you're more than welcome to download the game and, and, and try it yourself. Um, one of the... Actually, I have a criticism for the interaction system, because if I want to skip really fast... I'm like this. Oh, I started over again, I think. Oh, not yet. Oh, this, okay, this one is actually quite easy, but I have actually experienced in the past that immediately afterwards you could, like, keep interacting, and then he just started over the, the talking loop. Um, here he actually gave me, like, I couldn't keep pressing, like, it, I would have to wait, like, half a second to a second before interacting again, so I had time to, like, oh, stop the conversation. Um, it's just a little bit annoying if you want to skip past really fast, and then... You accidentally start up another loop because you can't exit the conversation. It, you can just like finish it, so you have to keep clicking and finish it. Um, and I would love to see just like being able to press B or something, and then you just oh exit the conversation. Smile. It says in the background. This day just keeps getting. 
Uh, Thomas, you and your butts. <laughs> Thomas is uh, working on a another game right now, which is actually in 3D. And just like he found out, as I found out, um, 3D games are a lot easier to make than 2D games. It's a weird statement to make. Oh, it's a weird statement to make, but it's true. 3D games are a lot easier and faster to build than 2D games are. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that 2D games, they, they look simple. I mean, it's a 2D game, you know, you just need a carrot and walk sideways. But, and, <laughs> but, you know, adding a third dimension to a game is not really something that makes it more difficult. It, I don't know how to explain it, it's just, it's so much easier. It, it feels like there's so much more gameplay there because there's three dimensions, when in reality there's a lot less gameplay. Um, it's it's hard to it's hard to say why. Oh no, it's Dr. Smile. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it was that thing again. That thing had taken Ren. Toby man. I'm just a child. But his wrinkling face only smiled. I'm starving, and I need to eat. So I snatched your pal. The perfect treat. The snack like that is said to make your wrinkling skin look young again. Uh, I love those little, um, you can really tell, like, Thomas put a lot of effort into, um, really making you feel the story. The, it, the game feels like a piece of art. As much of a, as a, it feels like a game. Help me, Puke! I think she's hungry! If you want me to help you, you gotta stop calling me that. <laughs> you got it! Uh, Pete. Oh, what do you call that? Like, when you're under the boot or something? Uh, in Danish, we call it Tuffelheld. It, it basically means that, you know, if you're in a relationship and uh, the girlfriend could just tell you to do whatever and then you do it uh, without question, it's like you're under the boots. Like you're basically just a, a sucker that, that does whatever she tells you. Um, that's what Simeon and, and I, we have that relationship apparently. <laughs> um, wow, this thing is horrifying. I have a theory. Um it's a little crazy. Uh, we could actually have her keep talking. Uh, basically, the adults have disappeared from the town. And she has a theory that these are the adults. That has turned into a big creature. Oh. There we go. Um, this puzzle here, by the way, took me forever. The first time. And I actually, you know, you know what, I, I'm not going to do this puzzle for you because this is, I think this was one of my most memorable puzzles in this game. Um, and if you want to check out the game, I want you to do the puzzle, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, basically, you need to use this guy in order to, to wake up the creature and there's a way to do it. So, so from here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and stop. I don't want to finish the Spidarian sewers. I want you guys to do it if you want to check out his game. Again, link is in the description. So we did find a couple of... I, I would say we found one bug and one sequence thing, you know, with the, the bench upstairs that I couldn't interact with unless I had the bird with me. I don't know how we'd solve that issue if you don't have bird with you. Like, I'm glad that you could interact over by the bench. It just felt weird that nothing was said, but I understand why that decision was made. Because... You know, the player doesn't talk, so, you know, you shouldn't yourself say it. And I understand the dilemma there. But yeah, the, the, the trail thing from the fairy going behind the tree, I think that's the only bug I've really seen in this game. Like, there hasn't really been anything else. Um, so yeah, this is what I really enjoy playing. Like, this type of game, where it's just like super polished. Um, I love seeing a game that has been put a lot of effort into. I love seeing... Uh, environments look incredible like like these do you can tell this is a game that has been put a lot of heart and soul into 
And this is the type of game that just makes you really happy to play because, you know, I, I love seeing indie games, I love playing indie games because indie games gives you something that other games don't. Like AAA studios, they always keep producing the same things because they know it works. If there is like a, a, a certain fad right now, is that how you say it? Something is popular at the moment. Like let's say, um, you know, a, a Puck G came out, you know, the battle royale thing where like the circle gets smaller and you have to like, kill each other and get to the middle. And, um, and then suddenly everyone starts making it because, oh my God, people love it. And then AAA Studios starts copying it because it's safe to copy because they know there's an audience for it. Um, AAA studios have a really hard time taking chances on things, which I understand. There's a lot of money that goes into it. It's a huge risk. The reason I love indie games is because a developer like, for example, Thomas Brush, who makes a game, makes games that are personal. It's a personal experience. And they take chances on things because it's something they just love making. And that's why when you pick up an indie game, they're also different. It's, be it's because it's a personal experience. And one of the things that I think Thomas Bross is really doing that is super good is he's super good at being critical and making games that are focused on a release mindset. Like he wants to release the game. He wants to get out to an audience and the audience has to enjoy the game. And that means that the game also has to be polished. So being self-critical is something that people, they when they're ready for it, whatever point in their life, they will start being more critical about their work. Um, so yeah, I love indie games. I love seeing personal experiences like this. Uh, it's just so much better to me than playing AAA games, unless it's like the right AAA game, you know, it's something that I actually enjoy, like Sea of Thieves, which is really awesome to play because it's like a pirate game. Um, <laughs> But I just love playing indie games and I, I love the feeling that they give you. I hope you guys can sort of like see what I tried to do with this video. I tried to get you into the mindset of playing a game like an indie game that is well made and then look critically at it. Try and take what works and maybe apply it to your own work because this is a good example of picking something that works and then learn something from it. So that's what I do when I pick up indie games. I spend 30 minutes, like I said, just in one section, analyzing everything with the physics and just to make it good. So when I make my own games, I know how to do it. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Link to the game is in the description and I'll see you guys next time.